I'm going to record. All right, we're streaming live on YouTube. Record. Hang on one second. Facebook. Facebook Live. Three, two, one. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at in the U.S. and around the world. Thanks for joining us. We are in over 100 countries, man. There's coaches, players, and parents watching and listening to the show. Remember, we're on YouTube live right now. Uh, Peter Caliendo, go there if you want to see both of us. If you're on Facebook, you're only going to see me, but you could hear our guest today um, on the audio part. And remember, all the audio goes on baseballoutsidethebox.com. Check it out. Subscribe to both. Do us a favor. Subscribe also to YouTube, Peter Caliendo. That's where all the videos are at, over 100 of them. So, again, folks, thanks for joining us today. We have a former major league player, the Hitman, and the Hitman, are you kidding me? 1980, 338 batting average, 21 home runs, 74 RBIs, 84, 313, 27 home runs, 91 RBIs. Talk about, it. that's why they call him the Hitman. This guy could flat out hit, and then he became a hitting coach in the big leagues um, with the Milwaukee Brewers, Boston Cardinals, a slight stint with the Dodgers. Um, it, this is gonna be exciting. We're gonna talk about the ABCs of hitting. Um, it's going to be a thrill. So let me welcome our guest today, Mike Easler. Mike, how you doing, buddy? Peter, good morning. Good morning. How you doing, guys? And guys, how you doing, America and everywhere else in the world? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Yeah, and if you've seen Mike, he's uh, he's in his car and he's really done a, done us a favor to do the show because he's real busy. He's in his car heading to the airport. Um, so we're going to get going right away. We're thrilled to have him on. Hey, Mike, uh, I might as well start with this right away. Uh, you know, you've been in the game so long, not just as a player, but as a coach, as a hitting coach. You've seen so much hitting going on, and I know you're passionate about hitting. Tell us about what your thoughts are when you were teaching hitting at the big league level and what some of the new things going on, what you think about everything. Because, you know, it can be a little confusing with the technology and the, you know, the launch angle and, uh, you know, kind of give us a, your, your background on that. What do you think? Well, Peter, I tell you, it's a long story. I, you know, uh, myself and Mo Vines uh, used to be at the Boston Red Sox. I still work along with him and uh, Boca Raton. We talk about hitting all the time, and the new things that coming out with hitting is amazing. It's amazing some of the things that they're saying, and I think you know a lot of things. You know, I think these kids are much stronger. Mm -hmm. I think they work out year round, and their bodies are in a different shape than ours were. You know, and the biggest thing is the exit velocity. Uh oh, I think we got cut off. No, you we're me? good. You're good. Keep going. Okay, okay. You get the exit velocity they talk about in the launch angle. These are things that I don't even ever talk about myself because, uh, trust me, I mean, if you see a ball, you hit a ball, you don't have time to think about it, getting that angle and how fast it goes off the bat. Your biggest concern is getting that bat head to the baseball. And it's one thing about me. Hang on, it went mute. We apologize. Yeah, we could have issues with the mic also as we travel here through the car. So, folks, we're going to be – Mike, Mike, you there? You're still on mute. Yeah, it's still muted. Yeah, it could be an issue with driving and the internet too. So folks, we apologize. We want to try to do this and, and give it a shot and see how it goes. Uh, we're still on mute. There you go. Mike, you there? All right, can yes. you hear me? I can hear you now. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's give it a shot here. Let's try one more time. So so you, you were talking about the launching. Can you hear me? Excuse me? You're talking about the launch angle and some of the technology. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The launch angle technology, the biggest thing is when we were playing, guys were throwing so hard, guys had such good stuff, that my biggest concern was getting a bad head to the baseball. I taught guys to have slow feet, your hands in a good launching position, your hands in a good position, you see the ball out the pitcher's hand, you read the ball, and then you explode on the ball. That's where we got the ABCs of hitting. See? read and explode. I try to keep it as simple as possible because hitting is very difficult. One of the toughest things to do in all the sports is hit a round ball with a round bat, coming at a high rate of speed. So therefore, I think they've complicated hitting a little bit more. 
I think that's why they strike out more. I think that's why they're more inconsistent. They go into deep slumps because they're teaching. And I think it's a little bit too much technology in the art of hitting, in the you know, in the game of hitting. And Mike, is there a difference? You know, a lot of times you hear, you know, you want players to always try to hit the ball hard. Um, I'm assuming to get that, you know, a little bit more velocity. But there, you also yes. see some pretty good hitters where they'll choke up. Maybe they won't try to hit the yes. ball as much at, with two yes. strikes. Yes. What's the philosophy there? The another thing, Peter, I think that's a lost art of making contact. See, the guy is, you know, where we started our stance off, when we got two strikes, we cut everything down. We slowed everything down. We choked her on the back. We got a little wider in our stance. We got a little lower. And we basically, we were going into what I call a, a contact mode. We were just trying to hit the ball hard to all fields. You know, some of the best hitters that I played against, um, Rod Carew, uh, Pete Rose, um, um, Tony Gwynn, Don Madley, Wade Boggs. These guys could flat out hit. And when they got two strikes on them, they had a whole different approach. They used the whole field. They cut down on their swing, and they just tried to make hard contact, hard contact. Mike, what's your advice? Nowadays, you know, you're seeing a lot more velocity with pitchers. The average velocity went up. What's your advice for hitters? Because, you know, they got to learn. They got to catch up to that. Now, at big league level, some of them be, you know, might be doing that. But at the youth levels, you know, younger levels, you got kids that are throwing a lot harder. So what's a young person do? How do they catch up to that fastball that they're not used to? You know, the biggest thing is, just like I say, I teach, you know, when I'm teaching hitting, and when any any coach is teaching hitting, you got to work with the foundation. You have to have really a good, solid base. Uh, you know, weight on the balls of the feet, a little flex in your knees. Just in a good, quiet hitting position. And your stride has to be short. A lot of times I see guys picking their front leg up, flipping their front knee with the, you know, as they load. And I think that's entirely too much movement, too much time, because that ball is coming up there at a high speed. So I would always say a slow feet, what it started, you tell me this with the Pirates, what it started, you. slow feet gives you quick hand. So your stride should be six inches or less, your hands stay back, and you just take your hands right to the ball, your hands. And there's another teaching, too, they talk about taking the knob of the bat to the ball. Let me tell you something. You take the knob of the bat to the ball now, you're going to get splattered. It's going to break <laughs> that bat in half. You better take your hands and the bat head to the ball, not the knob. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because I heard you talk about that, and I worked a long time ago with Jay Ward, who used to be with the Red as a player, and he talked hands a lot. So the hands basically, they control the bat, right? I mean, that's how you you got to get the you, barrel thank there. Thank you, thank you. See, what I teach, what I talk about is – the bat head is an extension of your hands. So when I throw my hands, I'm really throwing the bat head to the baseball. The ball's inside, I take my hands inside. The ball's away, I throw my hands, and I'm throwing the bat head. The bat, as you said, your hands control the bat head. And where your hands go, the bat head will go. I mean, you know, you, you mentioned earlier about, um, you know, how would we catch up with that fastball now? Man, we would love it now. I mean, all I do is put my back foot in throw it in there and I just sit on cheese. I just sit back and wait for the fastball. There's no way I'm going to miss a fastball. I don't give a call on how hard he throws because there's no way he can throw 99, 100, 99, 100. It's impossible. Yeah. And plus, I think that I, I, I know they're throwing hard, but I think some of them um, clocks, they got to sped up a little bit. I don't think they're throwing as hard as they say they are. They're throwing hard, but I don't think, you know, 97, 103, 102. Uh, yeah, that's I can't that see it. Maybe, 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 maybe it is. It could be a little show. Look, you know, people love velocity, so they maybe change it a little bit. Hey, um, exactly. I, I know you talk about the ABCs of hitting, so that, and, and we're limited on time. I know you're heading to the airport, so let me get to it. The first thing you say is see the baseball. What did you yes. do, and what do you teach when it comes to seeing the baseball? Okay, now, when the pitcher's on the mound, I always ask the kids, what are you looking at? And they say the glove, the ball. I say, why would you look at the glove and the ball? Because the pitcher's taught to hide the ball. So I tell him to pick up the logo on the hat. Put up, you know, the name of the team with a logo on the hat. I call that soft focus. So as the pitcher's winding up, his eyes and everything stays on that hat. Because once the once he comes around and about to release the ball, then the eyes shift over to his release point. So you see the ball out of his, his release point. And then you react to the ball. The ball will talk to you. Fastball, curveball, changeup, knuckleball, spitball, whatever he's going to throw. You see the ball leave his hand, and that's when your hands are back and you load. 
you load it, you launch, load, launch, whatever you want to call it. You hit the back, then you see the ball first, then you react. See the ball first, then react. You can't see the ball, I mean, you can't react to the ball until you see it leave the pitcher's hand. What's your recommendation to guys that throw, you know, a pretty good speed, but also have a good off speed? Um, how does the okay. timing aspect work with that along with the vision? Okay, now you see how important to read the ball. So if I read that bar rotation, I just react with my hands quickly. Now, if I see the spin on the ball, a lot of times back in my day, I used to, I could really see the rotation of the, of the, uh, of the red threads come together. Like on a curve ball, you can see that kind of looping, looping effect with the ball or a slider. I can see the red dot come together, the ball, the rotation of the ball when they cut the ball. I can see that red dot. So I went to home plate looking to hit the ball the middle to opposite field, middle to opposite field. See, most kids nowadays are looking to pull the ball with that launching or uppercutting, a slight uppercut. That's why they strike out so many times. That's why they look bad on breaking balls. But I can you anticipate what the pitcher may throw. As you develop as a hitter, you kind of got a feel of what he may throw in certain counts. 2-0 and fastball, 3-1 and fastball, 0-2 breaking ball, 1-2 and breaking ball. So you anticipate the pitcher, so you slow your body down, and you're hitting the kind of all-speed, I call it an all-speed mode. So when you see the ball spin, if it's high, you let it fly. If it's, break, if it's breaking low, you let it go. I know it sounds easier than that, but I know it's not that easy. But basically, you read the ball first, read the rotation, and um, and then you hit the ball, you know. That's why you have to, to be a good hitter. You have to learn to go to opposite field and develop a good inside-out swing. A good inside-out swing, um, you develop a feel for the ball where you reverse the spin. If I'm a, I was a left-handed hitter, so the curveball used to come back door to me. I try to hit it the opposite field because I would be reverse the spin of that breaking ball. And I do that with my hands and the back hand. I know it's a lot, it sounds, tech, you know, I mean, but if you're in the batting cage with me, I make it very simple. You know, that's why I call it the ABC of hitting. See it, read it, and explode. Yeah, I think sometimes what happens is people are out there, they're, they're, they're kind of marketing themselves, so they kind of make it complicated, so it sounds yes. unique. Yes. Yeah. Or in special. Yeah. And I get I get it, but I think we need to keep it simple, like you said, because it's already hard to do. Yes. Now, with the yes. pitchers that you faced, what pitcher gave you trouble? Um, what type of pitcher gave you trouble, and how did you try to make an adjustment? Okay, there's two pitchers that gave me the most trouble. Number one, Phil Negro. You know what he threw, right? Yeah. He threw the, he threw the knuckleball. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Negro had about three or four different tight knuckleballs. He could change speeds on his knuckleball. He had a high one. He had a low one. He had one that broke like a screwball. He had one that broke like a curveball. He had another one that broke like a slider. I'm serious. The ball was moving everywhere. When I faced him, it looked like he put me in a slump for a week after that. It took me a week to get my swing back. And the other pitcher that gave me trouble was um, Jack Morris. You remember Jack Morris? Oh, yeah, Tigers. Sure. Before the, the yeah, twins. before the Twins the and um, Detroit Tigers. Yep. Um, he was a sinker, but he threw about 94, 95 sinker, and he had a tough slider, and he had a split. They don't throw as many splits nowadays, a split fastball. I mean, it, it just comes about high velocity. All of a sudden, the bottom falls over. It's like a hard knuckleball, hard, I don't know. It was just nasty. Split finger fastball was nasty. You know, and, um, you know, Jack Morris had that pitch, and he stayed inside on me, he sunk it away. He just he, he just had great control. As a matter of fact, he just got to the Hall of Fame a couple of years ago, Jack Morris. Yeah. And Very good pitch, big workhorse. What, what was your plan with these guys? Because you knew them, obviously. You faced them. My plan was to back off the plate and pray that he makes a mistake over the plate. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. No, the good pitchers, all you can do is sit on mistakes. Yeah. Because them guys, they, you know, they can carve that plate up. You know, they can work you long away, come inside on you, go up and in. And the thing about it is, back in our day, pitchers knocked you down more. I mean, they moved you off the plate more. They pitched inside, as you hear. Yeah. And they were mean. A lot of them were mean. They come right at you, man. I mean, it was a battle out there. It wasn't no, you know, see who could throw the hard and hit the furthest. I mean, back then, boy, if you took a big swing like that and hot dog and flipped the bat, they would drill you next time up. You would get hit. Yeah, you would. They, they would. They would send a message. They look. Don't show me up, and I won't show you up. It's yeah. a whole different ball game now. And I, 
you like it, but I kind of, you know, they say that's the kids play, but to me, God, I'm disrespect the game myself. Understand, understand. I remember Bob Gibson, man. He'd come at you. Um, oh, trust if, me. If, if trust you looked me. at him wrong, yes. he might come at you. I'm you know, telling you, and shoot, I had a couple guys on my team. John Candelaria would do that. Yep. Bruce Keeson would do that. Well, let me tell you, a lot of them guys, they didn't play that. You know what I mean? You go up there and battle, and, you know, tough at bat. But don't be showing me up by standing the home plate, looking and flipping the bat and throwing the bat every which way. Yeah, we, no, just, had a, that, matter fact, we just had a Dodger pitcher throw his hat up in the air after the third strikeout. Yeah, uh, stuff okay. like that. You know, I mean, it's just crazy. It's just crazy what they do. But, you know, this is a different era, different day. So yep. it is what it is. Uh, all right. Listen, the other thing is I know hopefully you're getting close to the airport here, but um, a lot of times you're going to be off time as a hitter. You know, you're, you're not always going to be on time. Maybe you got two strikes and you got a battle. Yes. How do you do that? Yes. What, 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 any advice on that? Well, the biggest advice is you got to let the ball travel. You ever heard of people talking about let the ball travel? Yep. Otherwise, let the ball get deeper in the strike zone. See, everybody's trying to get the bat out front and lift the hit for power. To battle, and when you face some tough pitchers, you got to let the ball travel longer. I know it's hard to let a guy travel that, you know, they're throwing 95, 97, 96, but you still got to let it travel. I mean, I'm sorry, you just got to... Because when you leave your back leg and you go out front to hit the ball, you're going to lunge. Mm. And when you lunge and your body goes forward, your back speed is going to drop. Then you're going to get jammed. And again, I go back to what Willie Sharger said. Slow feet gives you quick hands. So therefore, you just widen your base a little bit. Keep your hands up and just slow your body down. Let the ball travel. Because when the ball travels longer, you see the ball longer. And that's why I say you have to be able to hit the ball to all fields. And that's what I did when the guys were tough like that. I just tried to put the ball in play hard anywhere. Left field line, right field line, center field. I tried to use the whole field. You know, that's why I could hit a 338 or 313 with 27 home runs. I used the whole field. I wasn't just a poor hitter or just an opposite field hitter. I was a hitter like a Paul Molitor. I used the whole field. Robin Yacht used the whole field. Tony Gwynn. Use the whole field. Rock Carew, use the whole field. I could go on and on and on. You know, and the power hitter, Reggie Jackson, Apple, you know, hit a bunch of bombs opposite field. You know, all them guys, they use the whole field. Hank Aaron, Willie Mays. <laughs> I could go on and on and on. Yeah, and speaking about that, you know, you talk about because you look at the shifts nowadays and fans will say, why why doesn't he hit it the <laughs> other, away from the shift? But they're really not training to do that. That's the problem, no? Well, the thing about the shift is, and this is how – the game, I think, it went backwards. If they shifted on me and I hit 338, if they shifted on me, I probably hit, I, I probably hit close to 400 every year. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no way that they're going to pull all them guys to the right side of the field. I'm left handed hitter. All I do is back off the plate and go the other way. But I blame the batting coaches. I blame the organizations because they do not teach these kids how to use the whole field and how to use the you know, choke up on the bat and cut down on the swing. You know, they're too busy feeding them all this data from the launch angle and exit velocity and all that stuff instead of teaching the true art of hitting. See the ball, read the ball, and explode to the ball wherever the ball's pitched. You know, they're not keeping it simple. Trust me, I know they're not. Yeah, you could tell. Mike, uh, you've been watching the playoffs. Well, and, you know, what's your prototypical hitter that you like in the playoffs that you'd love to have a lineup of those guys? Okay. Um... The left hitter hitter for Atlanta. What's his name? First baseman? Oh, yeah. Uh, I almost went blank, too. But I know Freeman. Freddie Freeman. Freeman. Freddie Freeman. To me, got one of the best swings out there. Freddie Freeman. Some of the other kids, I don't know. But i tell you one thing. They got some good hitters. Some of them hitters can hit. I mean, I love some of them. But if you notice, the one that can really hit is the one that use the opposite field. They strike out. They don't strike out a lot. When they get two strikes, they take the ball the other way. Freddie Freeman is really good at that. Yep. And Azuna's good at that. Yep. You know, a lot of them kids, they're great. You know, I'm not saying these kids aren't talented. You know, and the ones that are really talented is the ones that do what I say. They cut down on their swing. They use the whole field. They hit the breaking ball the other way. And when you make a mistake inside, they'll pull you out the ballpark. Yeah. Um, and these and guys and are Freeman. very talented and very strong. And, and you know, Freeman's a great example because he's got high average, on-base percentage. Yes. Home runs, yes. he's got yes. it all. 
Yeah. Now, remember, when we look at the World Series, and I'm wondering about these teams, you look at, um, you know, the Cubs, you look at Boston, the, the recent teams that won the World Series, even Houston. Those guys were all hitting balls in the gap. Yes. It wasn't exactly, just one team. Exactly. Yeah. And you've noticed, have you noticed, Peter, the Dodgers get there every year. Yep. They got pitching and they got home run power. But they always struggle in the playoff in the World Series because most of their hitters are poor hitters. And most of them have that long single swing. And they just don't hit. It's good pitching. You've heard it. It's good pitching. will stop good hitting. Yep. And that's what happens. When them guys can pitch and put the ball where they want to, and they got that uppercut home run swing, they're going to get beat almost every time. And that's what's happening to the Dodgers now. The Dodgers got tremendous power. You know, they could put 20 runs on the board, but yet and still, they lose because they got that big old swing and big old launch angle. And I don't know if they're using, I don't know what kind of technology they're using, but I believe there's a lot of that launch angle, action velocity stuff, and they pay the price every year when they get down to playoffs in World Series time. Absolutely. Yeah, and that you can see that. And, and as you said, when you get to the playoffs, you're facing even better pitching because you're facing the best of the exactly. best. Exactly. Um, exactly, and they struggle every time. You know, on the, on, to finish off on the ABCs, the other part you mentioned was the explosion part. Um, how yes, is, yes. That part and how do you teach that? Well, a lot of times when I'm teaching hitting, as I said, I talk about throwing your hands to the, to the bat head. As the ball's coming, you literally snap your wrist as you're making contact. You snap your wrist. You throw your top hand, and your bottom hand whips. So if you make contact and your hands are whipping and exploding, you'll get that explosion. You don't just try to make contact gingerly or just hit the ball gingerly. You're trying to... in half with your hands, which is when I say my hands, I'm trying to hit the, split the ball in half with the bat head. So when the ball's in the zone and your feet are slow and you take your hand to the ball, you snap that bat head through the zone. And the reason I say that is it's really your wrist. Freddie Freeman does that with the best of them nowadays. Hank Aaron used to do it with his wrist. Yep. Um, wrist hitter. Um, Mike Smith did it with his wrist. Rod Carew was sweet with his. He just kind of flipped the ball anywhere he wanted. Yeah. Tony Gwynn was sweet with his. He kind of flipped the balls. I call them sweet strokers. And then yeah. Reggie Jackson was an explosion. You know, Reggie Jackson exploded on the ball. Mark McGuire exploded on the ball. Um, Dave Kingman exploded on the ball. You know, uh, what is it He really exploded on the ball. I mean, I'm just saying, but it's your hand. You got live hands and wrists when you're making contact with the baseball. That's right, what I'm being exposed to. Finally, um, you and Mo Vaughn, uh, I saw you on a video talking about staying through the ball, how important it is. Yes. And explain staying yes. through the ball, what that does for you as a hitter. Okay, Peter, that's a good question because a lot of guys, they hit the ball and then they come around the ball. They cut their swing off. Mm -hmm. Now, now, when you stay through the ball, Meaning you stay level. As you make contact, you stay level through the ball, and then your hands continue out. That means your bat stays in the strike zone a long time, and the result of that is a high finish. When you got a high finish, that is your launch angle. I mean, if you want to talk about launch angle, I created the launch angle. Prince Fielder used to do that with the high finish. Fred McGriff had a high finish. Mo Vaughn had a high finish. A high finish, McGuire had to release but he finished high with that release. He released the top hand. That was a high finish. That is what the, the, what the launch angle is. The launch angle is after contact as you're staying through the ball. Through the ball. I'll give you an example. Yep, go ahead. If I hit a ball, if I hit a ball, and you put an imaginary baseball out front, boom, boom, you hit two balls. Instead of hitting two balls, you hit five balls. One, two, three, four, five. Then your hand is extended out, which is a high finish, and then you get the results. A high finish will give you backspin. Mm -hmm. Backspin is power. And Mike, that it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's uh, if you let go of the bat or even if you keep the. Nah, 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 nah. 
If you got a two-hand high finish, both hands are going to stay on the back and get that good extension. If you release, the release is not till after the swing is complete. So when you release the bat, your top end release is out in front of your body when the bat, the bat is high and almost, the swing is almost complete. And the release will give you more extension. So therefore, McGuire released. Fred McGriff released. Uh, Freddie Freeman is a two-hand hitter. Mm -hmm. Ozuna is two-hand hitter and release. Yeah. So if you do, if, if it's talked correctly, the release or the follow-through or the two-hands really make a difference. As long as you finish with extension and you finish high. You're going to get good results. All right. Love it. All right. Last thing, Michael, that is, um, you know, to our folks in the U.S., around the world, coaches, players, parents, any last minute advice when it comes to teaching hitting, some basic stuff to make sure that they're, do, you know, they're doing the right thing with these young kids. Well, Peter, the biggest thing is when you're teaching hitting, when you work with a kid, keep it simple. As I said, make sure you don't confuse the hitter. And the most important thing is when you're teaching it or you, when you're involved in sports, try to make it fun for the kids. Don't scream. Don't holler. Don't criticize. Because when you criticize a kid, then you hurt their, um, you know, their confidence level goes down. You have to coach with them. Um, you got to be encouraging. You got to tell them what they can do, not so much what they can't do. And you guys got to just take it one step at a time. Don't rush. Everybody learns at a different um, pace. Some can learn quicker. Some take a little bit longer. I mean, as far as my career is concerned, I was a late bloomer. Mm. I mean, I hit well in the minor league, but my whole game didn't come together until I was like 26, 27. That's when I really started to get it. Some kids get it at 19 and 20. You know, everybody learns at different paces. But as a coach and as a parent, don't criticize your son or daughter. You got to always analyze them and try to encourage them to have fun and to continue to work hard. And speaking about parents uh, and coaches during games, uh, last thing, I apologize, but during games, <laughs> how, important, how important, what should you be doing during games? Because a lot of times we put a lot of pressure on these kids. Yeah, I know. You know, I put it this way you coach a kid in practice. You send them to get private lessons or whatever they do in the batting cages on the field at practice. But during the game, all I would say is, come on, Joey. Come on, Henry. Come on, Mary. See the ball. Hit the ball. Have fun. You can do it. You know, no teaching fundamentals when they're on the field. And the last thing you want to do with a kid is scream at a kid and holler at him when he failed. He knows he failed. He knows he struck out. He knows he made an error. Joey, what are you doing? Why are you playing about that? No, that's <laughs> terrible. Yeah. You know, I put it this way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this nicely. It takes a wise man to analyze and an ignorant man to criticize. Now, in saying that, all I can say is that shoe fit weary. You know, don't be critical. And a lot of times, these coaches and some of the parents who are critical, they couldn't do it themselves. Yeah. So what the hell? Not only can they do it, they don't even know how to teach it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So don't yeah. criticize somebody that's shitty. You know, just don't criticize. It's not that, you know, it's not that serious, number one. It's a game, number two. And you go out there to have fun. Some have talent to go on to high school. Some have talent to go on to college. And a very few have talent to play pro ball because it's a long road to make it to the major leagues. And the game is tough. T-U-F-F. Very tough. Absolutely. Great last words. Great way to end the show, Mike. Can't thank you enough, man. God bless you and thank you very much. You enjoyed it very much, and I wish you the best. Your, your show is great. You're very good the game of baseball, and I truly enjoyed the interview. Big, All right. big, big time. Thank you, Mike. Folks, thank you to the hitman, Mike Easler. Thanks to Brian Crock, our producer with the Lineup Media Group. Thank you to everybody in the U.S. and around the world for joining us on the show. Don't forget, subscribe on YouTube, Peter Caliendo. Uh, at, on YouTube, we got over 100 shows there. The audio goes on Baseball Outside the Box. Dot com and that's where the audio goes folks on facebook thanks for joining us everybody stay safe have a great weekend god bless y'all and we'll see you on the next show